Hello everyone, welcome to the session on relational data model. This is a conceptual framework used in database management systems. It is introduced by Professor Cord in 1970s and it forms the basis for majority of the modern database systems. A relational database management system is a DBMS that is based on the relational model. Now, if you see the most of the management DBMS like SQL, MySQL Server or DB2 by IB, IBM or Oracle or even Microsoft Access, they all are based on RDBMS. What is this after all? Basically, the main construct of representing the data in the relational model is a relation. What is a relation? You can just imagine relation to a table. Basically, when I say a relation, it is made up of two parts, the relational schema and the relational instance. What is relational schema? It specifies the structure that is the name of the relation, the type of the attribute that is in the table form when you say each column and the instant is going to be the finite set of tuples in that particular table that is uh, the rows and column collection, so which are unique. So, a relation is represented as a table with columns and rows, each row is known as a tuple or a record and each column is known as an attribute or we can say it is the characteristics or feature of that particular relation. Let us try to understand some of the basic terminologies used in RDBMS. Relation schema, this represents the structure which is the name of the relation with its attributes. Coming to the degree, the total number of attributes in the relation is called as the degree. The tables are the relations itself which contains the data uh, organized in the form of rows and columns as per the structure defined in the relation schema. A tuple is a single row of the table which contains a single record of one instance of that particular relation. Attributes are the columns of the table which are used to define the characteristics of that particular relation. Maybe example in student relation it can be roll number, name, date of birth, etc. Coming to the cardinality, the number of rows present in the table can be called as the cardinality that is the total number of instances column represents a set of values of a specific attribute, relational instant as we discussed earlier it is the finite set of tuples of that particular table, it will not have duplicate values, relation key, keys are going to be those column attributes which can be used to uniquely identify the record, it can be a combination of multiple columns or otherwise a single column. Then attribute domain. Every attribute has some predefined set of values and this particular scope of values is known as the attribute domain. Now, this is one sample for the relation with all the various terminologies. So, here employee is the relation with the fields like employee ID, e-name, post and salary. The rows or records, the records of this particular table are known as tuples, here we have 4 records, degree is going to be the columns that is total number of attributes where we have 4. Here if you see the domain, attribute domain for salary can be between 5000 to 1 lakh, it is depends upon what value we want to insert. Okay. Let us quickly have a view on the various concepts involved in our relational model. First and foremost, the data is organized in the form of tables. A relation itself is a collection of rows and columns. So, there can be multiple tables in a particular database. The tables have keys. The each record can be uniquely identified with the help of the keys. Keys are going to be the set of attributes. Relationship between table, the different tables in that particular database are interconnected or interlinked through a common attribute that relation can be one to one or one to many or many to many. There is going to be something called as data integrity. The relational model enforces this data integrity 
through certain constraints like primary key, foreign key, domain constraint integrity rules, etc. And these constraints ensure that the data remains consistent and accurate throughout. Structured query language is going to be the actual language, official language of the relational model which is going to use or which is going to be helping us in manipulating the data stored. Normalization, this is the process of organizing the data in such that the redundancy is reduced and the dependency is going to be less. This is called as normalization and it involves breaking down of the large table into smaller ones by defining relationship between them to reduce redundancy and improve the data integrity. Finally, transactions, a relational database supports transactions where units of work that must be performed atomically that is either all or none consistently it should be in a valid state isolated they should be separated from one transaction should be separated from another and durably which is called as persistently stored this whole thing of transactions is actually known as asset properties so when we talk in terms of the relational model, this is a basic framework which is used in most of our uh, databases nowadays. So, let us look into how we can construct this relational model in our next video. Thank you.